This story is of my journey from a total knee replacement to riding my bike and trike again. Hi, I'm Joel Lightcatcher, and I'm gonna give you my real world experience, including some graphic video of me pushing through some of my exercises, and you're gonna see the pain in my face. What are you doing? Exercising. Ugh. And yeah, but it's all worth it in the end. I'm gonna tell you about the stuff again the doctors don't tell you uh, concerning the narcotics and sleep and uh, probably a number of other things. Uh, according to the doctors and my physical therapist, my recovery was pretty much textbook. But I do have a friend that got through it weeks earlier than me and I have another friend that took many weeks longer than I. So your mileage may vary. So let's get on with the information starting now oh and by the way if you like this content please subscribe and hit that notification bell it really helps me spread the information that i have to offer on this channel to a larger audience on youtube now let's get to the story but here's a spoiler first i felt great by the 12th week after surgery well enough to ride 31 miles in four hours on my recumbent bike there's a reason you haven't seen any videos for me in a while you see my right knee had been failing with arthritis and it got really bad last December of 2021. It seems I had worn my right knee down to bone on bone. And because of that, the lubricating bursa sac was leaking fluid and it developed a large baker cyst behind my knee. And that leaked down to my right calf and my foot and caused painful swelling. Too painful to even walk the dog around the block or ride my bike. I talked to a few doctors and they all agreed on the same fix, a total knee replacement. I knew I wouldn't be able to ride my bike for about three months, the month before surgery, because it hurt too much, and about two months after surgery while I was recovering. For me, cycling is like an addiction. I've been an active cyclist since the early 2000s, and if you're a constant cyclist like I am, you know how wonderful riding a bike makes you feel. It helps you manage your weight, control stress, get it gets you those great feeling endorphins and you know that's how that is my last group recumbent ride was on december 5th of 2021 and i remember that distinctly because the following week is when i noticed the worsting pain in my right knee when i was walking and over the next six weeks it got really bad fast to the point where i had to use a cane to walk cycling was just absolutely out of the question it just hurt too damn much. As an active person, this was very difficult for me. Sitting around the house just really wasn't an option. So I reported to the hospital for my surgery on February 2nd of 2022, and everything went fine. The procedure took about an hour and a half, and it was a routine operation, and I was transferred to a room in the afternoon. I wasn't feeling any pain because I had a nerve block all the way down my right leg, and the nerve block lasted about 72 hours. When I finally, you know, got the strength to look at my leg, I noticed there was just an eight inch straight bandage up the front of my knee. My leg was really swollen and stiff, but I was comfortable. A physical therapist visited me in the morning at the hospital, but all I could do was get out of bed, take two steps forward, two steps back, and get back into bed. The doctor sent me home a few hours later with a big bottle of Percocet. At home, I was popping them Percocets every four hours for the next two weeks to control the pain as per the doctor orders. But honestly, I didn't like being stoned 24 hours a day. By the third week, I was able to manage my pain better and I started to only take the Percocet at night to help me sleep. Sleep was a huge problem for me. Sleeping is the number one complaint of all surgery patients. The doctors don't even know why it's so hard to sleep. This procedure just totally screws up your cicada rhythm and you fall asleep during the day like a narcoleptic and at night you just roll around in bed and it was, it's a really horrible experience. That's the worst part of it. I even got depressed at times because, well, after a few weeks you just feel like a zombie and there seems like there's no way out. But it does get better. I stopped taking the Percocet after about four weeks. The drug withdrawal symptoms then kicked in, and that was not a pleasant experience. For several days, I had brain fog, chills, sweats, and bad headaches. My operative leg, the right leg, and foot was still very swollen. 
I had ordered several pairs of tight compression socks to wear during my recovery. I got them at Amazon, no big deal. And I recommend you buy some too if you're having this surgery. I was going crazy during these recovery weeks because all I could do was sit around the house with my legs up in the air on the Lazy Boy most all the time and do my physical therapy exercises. And my weight as a result increased from 192 pounds to 205 pounds because I was so sedentary. My only outlet was food and Netflix. It was a tough time. By the way, I didn't mention, uh, I started my diet about three weeks ago. I am just about back to my pre-surgery weight. Again, I went from 192 pounds to 205 pounds. And I'm happy to say I'm back down to 194 pounds. I'm two pounds from my target. And I'm very excited about that. Look at this, my computer here says, so far in the last two hours of riding around, I have burned 831 calories. That's more than twice the calories I ate for breakfast. I am doing some intermittent fasting and doing a restricted diet of about a thousand calories a day or less and it is working for me not to mention I feel clear in the head and sharp and full of energy so losing weight is amazing riding the trike and dieting great combination Blair and Belinda were my physical therapists I had two physical therapists and they alternated during the eight weeks after my surgery they visit me twice a week at home because I couldn't drive yet because my right leg was still, well, recovering. And I was, it was pretty tough for those first four weeks of physical therapy because, again, my right was very swollen. And I was doing a lot of grunting and groaning to do the simplest exercises. But I pushed my knee to flex and stretch as I had to. I didn't have a lot of flexibility in this new knee, but I was working hard on it. Walking was, well... It felt like I had a peg leg during those first few weeks. The exercises were tough, but the physical therapists were really excellent. They got me through it with a lot of motivation and encouragement. And as a result, my range of motion increased a little bit after every visit from them. The turning point in my recovery was on February 11th, about two weeks after my surgery. My physical therapist, Blair, had given me this little under the desk pedal device. You've seen them before. You can find them for around $40 on Amazon, and they really look ridiculous, like they can't do anything. But when you have a very short range of motion on your operative knee, they can be very difficult and painful to pedal around. I couldn't quite get my feet to spin these cranks a full circle yet. Blair had me just rotating my feet back and forth, back and forth, and that was that. And after about five days of practice, I got the cranks to spin a full 360 degree rotation. And that wasn't easy at all, as you can see from this edited video clip I'm gonna roll that right now. All right, let's give this a try. Hey, boo boo. Here we go. Ah! What are you doing? Exercising. Ah!
was like <clears throat> and that's what it's like trying to get back into pedaling after a knee replacement it's been two weeks and I'm told I'm doing better than most at this point so thumbs up March 4th was an epiphany for me Blair was working with me on that day, and that was the first day I was able to actually spin my feet all the way around the cranks with relatively little pain on that little desk, under the desktop device for pedaling that Blair had given me. I was still stiff as I hit the crank up at the top of the pedal stroke, but I had to push it through with a loud groan, and I really didn't care. I was just so happy that I was able to turn those pedals around. I happened to have my recumbent bike on a stationary trainer in the living room because I anticipated I would be working with that soon. And I had set that up uh, a week earlier. So I said to Blair, let's go and see if I can spin the pedals on the bike now. And I did. I just could, I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely sounded. I wish I could have seen my own face for the, at that time because for the first time in about three weeks I was actually sitting on my favorite bike that I've had for since 2003 and I'm turning those pedals around like I used to with a little trouble at the top of the crank stroke. So I said to Blair, okay let's go to the garage and try it out on my recumbent trike. Now my recumbent trike is an entirely different kind of riding experience. I have a cat trike road and it has a bit more compressed riding position. My knees are up higher, my feet are up above my hips, and the seat is very low to the ground. I was actually afraid that if I got down into the seat, I might not be able to get up again. But I felt secure Blair would be there to give me a helping hand if I needed it. I placed my Sport Crafters trike trainer under the rear wheel and I sat down into my trike. I had to help my right leg up on the pedal because it couldn't quite get there on its own and I began to spin the cranks. That first rotation was like the heavens opened up to me. I just couldn't believe I actually did it. I sat there and just with a look of amazement on my face and I spent the next three minutes just spinning the cranks some more. I had to push through the top of the pedal stroke again as my knees were still quite stiff but I didn't care. I didn't care if I had to grunt and groan to turn the cranks. I just was so happy I could actually do it. Getting out of the seat wasn't a problem either. I was also able to do that by myself. And I was very satisfied <laughs> that I got that done. This was the moment that my real recovery began. I turned the corner. I'm riding my bike again. It, well, if just on the trainers. 
So the next morning I took my trike out for a 20 minute ride and that was the most excitement I had in three months. I can remember, I couldn't do ride the bike for the month before my surgery and the two months after. So three months and I was riding again. By the eighth week after my surgery, I was finally able to drive my car again, which was very necessary because my in-home physical therapy ended and now I had to drive to in-office physical therapy for the next four weeks. Okay, there's something I haven't told you yet, but it's important I tell you now. You see, in March of 2021, I had my left hip replaced. I thought adding e-assist to my recumbent bike and trike would help my hip recovery and get me stronger more quickly and comfortably, and it did. But what I didn't know was it would be even more helpful on my future knee replacement, which I didn't even know I was gonna have at that time. I had installed a rear hub motor system on my trike and my bike about May of 2021. And for those of you who care, it's a 48 volt Falco system with a thumb drive and pedal assist. It's important for me to tell you that during the total knee replacement procedure, the surgeon cuts the tendon that's on the very top of your thigh. And after everything's done, he stitches it back together again. And that makes your quad muscle very sore and weak. My right quad thigh muscles had atrophied very badly as a result of this after the surgery. And it became very, very weak. Starting to ride my trike from a standstill was extremely difficult. And here's where the throttle was a huge help for me. Because I can use the throttle to get the trike moving again. And I didn't have to overstress my right quad to get to the point where I could actually turn the pedals again because I'm moving. Over the next few weeks, I reduced the level of the pedal assist on the motor and increased the gearing difficulty to help strengthen my quad muscles. By the 14th week, my right quad felt about as strong as it used to be. It wasn't quite that strong yet, but it felt that way when I rode the bike. And at 12 weeks and four days post-surgery, I completed that group ride I mentioned earlier of four hours and 31 miles. And that was amazing. I did it with no knee pain, no quad pain. I felt great afterwards. And again, I'll repeat, 12 weeks after my surgery, I rode 31 miles. And is that not the most amazing thing? At 14 weeks after surgery, I'm walking normally again. I've completed all my physical therapy and I continue to do some of the exercises on my own. So let's wrap up this video with a few conclusions. If you are having knee pain or hip pain, see your doctor and get an x-ray. Your doctor can easily tell you if you have a bone on bone or near bone on bone condition and if a total knee or partial knee replacement or a hip replacement is the best remedy for you. And if it is, don't put it off, just get it done. Don't be like my father, because in his 60s, he needed a total hip replacement. And he put it off for 10 years because he was a big scared baby. When he was 70, he got done and wondered why he ever put it off. So improve your life and don't, don't, don't wait. Uh, the first four weeks is pretty, yeah, it's pretty horrible. The pain, the sleeping problems, uh, and all that goes with it, the painkillers. But by the time you're into the six weeks, you're really starting to feel your old self. By eight weeks, you're really starting to get back to a normal, normal life. Um, again, a friend of mine had it full recovery within just a few weeks of it. And another friend took a lot longer than eight weeks. So your mileage may vary, but again, it's worth it in the end. Uh, I may not be able to rollerblade, ski, or run again. Not like I've done that for maybe 10, 20 years. But I can walk briskly, and if I wanted to take the grandkids for a day at Disney World, I'm confident that I could do it. Well, I hope you found this video helpful in your decision on your health and your knees and your hips. And if it did, please, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. See my head right over there? When you click my head, that will subscribe you to my channel. And if you hit the notification bell below, you're gonna see when I do post my following videos. And of course, please leave a comment. I'll be happy to respond to as many of you as I can. 
Thanks again for watching. I'm Joel Lightcatcher, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.